back to my channel and welcome back to another Sims 4 speed build. So in today's video I am creating a house that I've called the No Moo House because I built this house without using the Move Objects cheat at all, uh, which was very difficult for me to do. <laughs> there were quite a few things where I was like, oh, but I could put this rug here and then it wouldn't fit because I had shrunk it down and without using move objects, if the original footprint of the item didn't fit, then I was sort of stuck. So this was definitely a challenge. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a little while and I finally decided to go ahead and do it. And then because I am just a person who likes to torture myself, I decided to go ahead and build this house with using no custom content, which that's not a big deal. I never use custom content in any of my builds or in any of my create a sim. Uh, content. So I also decided to make this base game only <laughs> because why not? Uh, so yeah, it's been a little while since I've done a base game only build and I thought, you know what, I, I let's step this up a little notch and just make this even more difficult for me. But it actually, it turned out pretty okay. Um, the nice thing with doing a base game only build is that there's, because you're, you're limited to fewer items, obviously. So there are some things that I was like, oh, I could do this and put this in there. And then I would realize like, oh wait, no, I don't have that item actually. Uh, but a lot of the items that went with the base game all kind of go together naturally. So it worked out pretty well that there were a lot of items, like it didn't, it didn't take as much work to make things go together and look cohesive because they already sort of inherently go together anyways. Um, which I appreciate that. That was very nice of the Sims team to do it that way. Uh, but yeah, so this this was definitely, it was a fun build. It was different for me. Um, like I said, there were definitely a few times where I really wanted to put in a specific item and then realized that I couldn't. But I was also very proud of myself because a lot of times I didn't actually start off thinking I would do a base game only build. And so a lot of times when I go into it, like I'm going to only use base game or I'm going to only going to use this specific pack, I will actually go into the game and like manually disable those packs from even loading into the game at all. Um, but in this case, because I didn't decide that until I started placing the doors and windows and I was like, let's just make this base game only. I didn't disable anything. So I just had to like make sure that I stayed on top of clicking that little box on the filters that said base game. So I was very surprised. I didn't make any mistakes and accidentally use content from any other packs, which was very surprising uh, because that's so easy to do because we have so much content out at this point. And yeah, so uh, so I am recording this on December 29th. This video is scheduled com to come out on February 26th. So keep in mind if there's been new stuff that's come out since then, it's not going to be represented in this, but that's okay because it's a base game only build anyway. Um, but yeah, so this is actually the last of my maternity leave pre-recording videos that I have to do. Uh, if you haven't watched any of my videos recently or or have just discovered my channel. I am currently on maternity leave. Um, it's a little strange because when I'm recording this, like my baby hasn't been born yet, but when you're watching this, she will have been. It's a very, it's a very weird concept for me. <laughs> um, but yeah, so all of my videos recently have been pre-recorded, but next week I will be back. I don't know how much I'll be like uploading. It's definitely not going to be the five days a week that I was doing before or the four days a week that I was doing before. Um, it'll probably be one or two days a week just because, you know, life with a newborn. Like I gave myself a few weeks off, but also because I don't know when she's been born. I can't say for sure, like, you know, when I'll feel ready to go back a hundred percent. Uh, so I also don't know her temperament. <laughs> I'm really, really nervous about that actually because I was a very difficult baby. Um, a fact that my mother likes to bring up on occasion. Uh, not too often, but enough so that I'm well aware of the fact that I was a bit troublesome as a child. And so I'm very nervous about that, that my daughter is also going to be the same way that I was as a baby. So uh, thoughts and prayers. <laughs> that my kid isn't totally like exactly like me in that regard. Um, but yeah, so obviously, you know, 
we'll have to kind of play things a little bit by ear here and see how much I will be able to handle, how much free time I'll have, which, you know, I've seen, thankfully it has made me feel a little bit better because I've seen a lot of things from like other Simmer YouTubers who are also parents who have small children or, you know, like, I mean, there's, there's enough of us out there that like, I know I'll be able to find a way to make it work. It just won't be in the same way that I've been used to making it work so far. Um, so, but again, I, I, without actually having experienced parenthood and trying to maintain a YouTube channel and all the other things in my life on top of it, you know, like seeing family and friends and just being an adult, like there's a lot going on. So, you know, uh, I can't say for sure how things are going to play out. So keep that in mind, but I will be back next week with new non pre-recorded videos. So that's going to be fun, fun stuff to look forward to. Um, so in back to this house, I decided to build the kitchen kind of right inside the entryway, which isn't something I normally do. Um, but when I was doing the outside of the house, I decided I wanted to make that sunroom with all the windows, the dining room. So I was like, well, it would make sense to have the kitchen and the dining room right next to each other. So that way then if you're serving up food, that would make just the most logical sense. Also because Sims are kind of stupid and they tend to route towards the closest table and chairs that they can. And if I want them to actually use the dining room, it has to be close to where the food has been prepared. Um, it's also why a lot of times I don't end up doing island counters in my builds unless it's a huge, huge house. Um, or if I do it, like in this case, I don't put bar stools at them because if you want your Sims to actually sit at the table and eat at the table, you can't have anywhere closer for them to sit down and eat. Um, so I do have inside of the entryway, I do have one of those little like soft bench seating things. Um, mostly because I just, I don't know, I like to build sort of realistically. Like, and in real life, you would have something there where you could like sit down and put your shoes on before you go outside of the house, you know? Like, it just sort of makes sense to have something like that there. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that your Sims don't decide to sit down on that little two person bench to sit and eat their dinner or whatever. Uh, and if they do, you can always just delete it. It's not that big of a deal. Um, but yeah, so I had a hard time actually coming up with stuff that fit correctly on the counters without using move objects, especially plants. And because I was limiting myself to just base game, like there's some good plants that came in the dine out game pack that I love using for like tables and counters. They're smaller, they slot nicely, like it just makes a lot of sense. Um, but since I wasn't using dine out, I couldn't use those plants. Uh, so I had, I had a little bit of a struggle there, but I always like putting like a little bit of greenery in, especially like a kitchen. Um, I don't know. I just, I think it's nice. Or like you could sort of imagine that they're like little things of like potted herbs or something for your Sims to use in their cooking. I don't know. I just, I like it. I think it, it also helps brighten up a room and I unintentionally wound up doing this house in like a lot of gray colors. Uh, cause I went with kind of like the grayish color floorboards and then I just sort of ran with it. Like there's gray in a lot of the rooms, like the carpet I think in the master bedroom upstairs is also gray um, and so when I'm doing flooring if I'm doing something like a wooden floor I like it to run throughout all of the rooms um, just because it, it again is more realistic and I think it helps the rooms feel bigger and it helps the flow work out a little bit better um, I also try to have the flooring on the landing upstairs be the same flooring as what's downstairs and if possible I try to make the wallpaper the same so it doesn't always work out that way like in this case the wallpaper that I wound up putting here in the living room it's like it's the green it's like a light green color with um, like vertical baseboards I guess you would say I don't know um, so upstairs I didn't go with green because it was starting to get to be a lot of green but I wound up using the white variation of that as well. Um, I also used some different couches. I've never actually used those couches, I don't think. Uh, they're not bad. They're a little modern looking. And I think overall this house is like, it's a good mixture of like modern furniture with 
older furniture. Uh, it's not really like one or another strictly. Like the master bedroom definitely has like older style furniture, like more traditional style furniture. But then like the dining room table is a little bit more of like a farmhousey industrial looking thing. And then the couch is here. I mean, like I've, I've said this so many times, I really despise like almost all of the couches that we have in The Sims 4. Uh, and these actually don't look too terrible, I think. They're not great. They still look a little stiff and awkward to me, but they look better than a lot of the other couches that we have in the game. Um, the other thing with doing this big of a room was I had a hard time decorating it. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know, I was running out of ideas of things to put up on the walls and, you know, it's just, it's, it, to me, I'm not 100% happy with the living room if I'm perfectly honest. It's a little bare bones, I think. Um, but I also sort of figure too, you can always go in and add in more paintings. Uh, personally, like if I have an artist sim living in a house, I'd like to put up a few of the paintings that they make. You know, they don't have to sell all of it, especially once they're like more successful. Um, or sometimes they like, they'll paint something and you see it and you're like, ooh, yeah, I like this. Like even though it's worth a lot of money if I sell it, I might keep it because I like how it looks. Um, but yeah, I really, I wanted something on either side of the TV here on those walls that like matched. And a lot of the base game paintings don't have like different paintings with the same frame. Like I feel like that's a thing that they started doing in later packs where you'll have like one item with like multiple swatches. Like, like think of like, for example, think of the like artwork that we have from City Living where it's just uh, like one wall mural, but there's like multiple variations of it. We don't really have so much of that in the base game, unfortunately. So like when you're trying to come up with something that could mirror on either side of something and you want it to match and look kind of cohesive, it's kind of impossible to do. There's a few paintings that are like that, but not very many. Um, so I wound up just using those keys twice, which again, not totally happy with, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, and so, yeah, so then I did the half bath downstairs as well. Uh, that's something else I always like to do in my builds is have a half bathroom if I can find a spot to put it in. Especially if there are no bathrooms on the first floor, like if no full bathrooms. Um, just because, you know, who wants to have their sims constantly going upstairs to go to the bathroom? Um, and with where I positioned it, I'm hoping that it's far enough away from the kitchen that your sims won't decide to start washing the dishes in that sink. Because I feel like that's just like a recurring bug. I feel like they've fixed that bug so many times and it never actually stays fixed. But at this point, I just try to, you know, deal with it because <laughs> clearly the Sims are, are not the most intelligent people out there, but hey, that's okay. Uh, so yeah, so this is obviously the master. I went again with kind of like a soft purpley gray color scheme in here. Um, it actually kind of reminds me of like a bedroom that I would have seen at like a an upper middle class house from like the mid to late 90s. Uh, just like with the styling of furnishings and stuff, like very traditional and ornate, but not necessarily like fancy. Um, actually, this whole house in general sort of reminds me of like the mid to late 90s. I don't know why, maybe because I was building it without using any move objects cheats. I got like some serious like Sims 1 to Sims 2 vibes when I was building this house. Um, I don't know, it just just kind of it really did remind me of like something that I would have seen in like an early early Sims game. Um, but I don't know, I like it. I think it's turned out well. Uh, so yeah, so up here on the landing, I always struggle with what to do on landings. I decided to put in a bookcase because bookcases are a good way of taking up space, especially if you have a lot of wall space. Um, and then I put in some plants and I think a standing lamp at one point. Don't necessarily need the standing lamp, but it was something that filled up a corner that gave it a little bit of variety. Uh, so that's what I went with. It's again, like it's kind of thematically a little all over the place up here. like. The couch that I chose was a little bit like, I don't know, it, it, it's 
like it reminds me of something you would see in like Arizona <laughs> like it doesn't really suit the rest of the furnishings up there uh, but you know maybe it's just an older couch that they had at some point and then you know like there's always that spot in houses where like old furniture kind of goes to live out its final days and so maybe that's what happened here I don't know um, so now I'm just duplicating all the items from the bathrooms downstairs. I decided to leave this part in. I actually didn't cut out any footage in this speed build at all. Normally I cut out like the layout or the bathrooms or the outside like decorations and stuff. I left it all in for you guys because I figured like half of the fun of doing a challenge like this where you're not able to use the move objects cheat is seeing how everything works without move objects. Um, but yeah, so normally this is what I do with my bathrooms is I have one base model and then I just sort of replicate all the items from it. <laughs> uh, with like the one exception is that obviously the half bath doesn't have like a shower or a tub. Um, and then the master bathroom has a bathtub separately in addition to the shower, uh, which works out well because one of the bedrooms that I put in is actually meant for toddlers and with toddlers you need a tub to be able to wash them or like if you have a dog you need to, a tub to wash them there um so yeah also I don't know I don't know if this has been I don't know if it's done intentionally or if it was a bug or something but I noticed recently that if you want to do like like a muscle relaxing soak you can only do those in the standalone bathtubs not the shower tub combos and I don't know if that's like on purpose or if that's just a bug or if it is a bug by the time this video comes out it honestly could have been fixed because we're talking like two months later like this is like a weird form of time travel over here uh, so this is the kid bedroom I tried to make it kind of like gender neutral ish there's a lot of like greens but there's also some blues so you know whatever whoever you want to have in this bedroom that's cool um, I had I don't know like the kid bedroom sizing I feel like I probably could have given them a little bit more space but uh, because I made the living room downstairs so large I sort of figure that they'll end up spending most of their time in this house like downstairs together as a family and like bedrooms are mostly meant for like sleeping um, but I really I liked how this kid's bedroom turned out I think it's a really cute little room um, I will say we definitely don't have enough kid stuff with just the base game so that was my uh, my struggle in this one <laughs> was coming up with stuff to decorate these rooms with but hey you know I'm I think it turned out okay the toddler room I, I don't know some of the toddler items and I feel like I've said this before the toddler items are just in kind of strange color swatches like it's like this bed in particular it's all in very like muted colors but most of the toddler furnishings are not most of the toddler stuff in the game is like the very bright colorful color palette so it does make it more difficult to try to find stuff that matches um i also because this the shape of this room is kind of weird i had a little bit of a struggle trying to find a way to make it all work uh but so eventually i sort of changed the color scheme to be like more of like a neutral with like hints of orange and I kind of ditched the green altogether because the green just was not working um, I also didn't know what to do about the windows because with where this is positioned in the house I can only use those smaller windows and in real life you probably shouldn't have very long curtains right next to a toddler bed because that just seems dangerous but the shorter curtains didn't look right either <laughs> so but I think like by this point now once I put up those two trees on the wall I'm like okay this is like starting to feel more like an actual toddler's room um, I don't know something about those little trees is just like makes me think like oh it's like whimsical in here I don't know um, so yeah so it's definitely it's it's different kind of challenges doing those toddler rooms I think but I think in the end it turns out pretty good and then out here I have a patio table and a grill, uh, an outdoor trash can, which is always important. Um, I wasn't really sure where I needed the stairs to be to make this all work. Um, so I wound up putting the outdoor patio table like right next to the windows from the dining room table, which is kind of funny, but I think it looks cute. And then that way the stairs actually work out where they're straight in line with the back door. 
I also put a little side table uh, next to, well actually it's a dining table, but I put it next to the grill so that way then if your Sims are grilling up food, they have a spot to set their food right there. Because with those uh, patio tables with the built-in umbrella, they either don't set them down on the table at all, or if they do, they block one of the spots for your Sims individual plates of food to go. So I decided that would not do, and so I decided to give them a little, a little side table there. Um, so this is now the landscaping portion, which was honestly the thing that was making me the most nervous going into this because landscaping is definitely the time that I use the move object cheat the most. Um, luckily I discovered that uh, those lavender plants can be sort of layered on top of each other without using move objects, so that's what I went with. <laughs> Uh, it's not the fanciest, but it'll it'll have to do. Uh, and then I decided to fence in the backyard just because I felt like it made the house seem a little bit more finished. And again, I try to build somewhat realistically, and I think you would probably have your backyard fenced in if you have, like, kids and stuff running around. Like, it just seems like a safer thing to do, I think. Um, so, yeah, so I think, I think this all turned out pretty good. So, no custom content, no move objects base game only. Uh, I I was very pleased with how this build turned out and quite honestly a little surprised. I had a lot of fun doing it too. Like sometimes you know you go into a build and you're like all right I need to do a build but it's not like it's just not working out well but surprisingly I, I had pretty good luck with this I think. Like things went pretty smoothly and it all turned out pretty pretty good I think. Um, so this is the no moo house. Uh, it's currently available for download on The Sims 4 Gallery. Uh, the easiest way to find it would be to click on the link in the description box below this video, or you can always search for it on the gallery using my username, which is Mrs. Tomato 1018 or through the hashtag Mrs. Tomato 1018 And of course, there's no custom content, no move objects cheat, and this is base game only. So yay, everybody can download this as long as you have The Sims 4. Uh, but anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, you can do so down below. I put up a new video, well, right now we'll say every Tuesday. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.